Well, good evening, everyone. Woo, got some feedback up here. Praise God. It's good to be in church. Amen. Yes. Glory to God. So glad you're here. Uh, youth, you're dismissed at this time. We, I guess we have no announcements, but if you're a parent of a youth, hopefully you got the announcement today that was sent to you. If not, see Mike afterwards. How's that? <laughs> Praise God. They're uh, preparing to go to camp. Mike just shared with me Typically, he and Shana go out and buy all the snacks and goodies for camp, and I guess they're going to make a field trip of buying the snacks. God bless Mike and Shana for doing that. <laughs> I don't even want to take, yes. <laughs> I don't even want to go to the store with like one of my kids when they're hungry, much less a whole youth group when they're hungry. So uh, that'll be interesting. Mike knows how to keep them in line, though, that's for sure. Praise God. Well, glory to God for the Word of God. Amen. Are you excited about Jesus? <gasps> Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. If you have your Bible, go to Romans chapter 12, verse 2, please. Now, I, I didn't give it to the sound booth. That's a, a, the Lord's just going a little different direction real quick here, real quick. Praise God. I started a series last week. This series is entitled Faith in the Word of God. Now, I, I'm just going to say this here. I, I think there's going to be some things perhaps that come out tonight that, um, that the Lord's going to have me uh, teach on on Sunday. And I, I, I'm, I'm very excited about what the Lord has for Sunday. So I just encourage you to, to be here. Make every opportunity to be here. Invite someone because I just know it's absolutely going to bless you. Praise God. But tonight, we are talking about faith in the Word. And again, I think th some things that are going to come out tonight are going to tie to Sundays, which is going to be very, very exciting. Now, if you think about this just real quickly, we talk about faith. Faith is, uh, I think it's a very interesting topic. Um, for me, my personal life, I don't think I can get enough teaching on faith. I really, 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 really like uh, hearing faith taught and preached to me because uh, I, I see, and, I, and I've pointed this out to you all so often through the scriptures, how the Word of God tells us and teaches us that we're to live by faith, right? Right? I mean, we've looked at this from Habakkuk all the way through, you know, from the Old Testament all the way through to the New Testament. This is very, very consistent that the just shall live by faith. And I, and I think as a Christian, Jesus is who's made, has made us justified. And I think as a Christian that we should endeavor to know and to grow in the Word of God and understanding of what that means to live by faith. If he's telling us, hey, I want you to live this way, live by faith, then we should, you know, we should dig in <laughs> and we should want to really find out what does that mean to live by faith? And just, to, you know, just speaking as a pastor and, and, and getting to know and meeting people, you know, over the years now, 20 years of ministry, and when you, when you identify and you talk to people, you really can find out pretty quickly where they're, where they're living and if they're living by faith. And I don't mean that from a judgmental standpoint at all, but you can really, when you talk to someone, you can hear faith. Your spirit hears faith coming out of people's conversation. You know, the Bible we looked at, you know, uh, uh, you know maybe a few months ago, and about how out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And we looked at how we measure what we hear, right? Well, that is part of this whole ministry of faith that comes from the Word of God. Because faith, if we're to live by faith, and you begin to adopt that and implement faith in your everyday life. I mean, just think about it. it. From the moment you wake up to the moment you lay your head on a pillow, in fact, all the way through your sleep. I mean, I've already heard testimonies just that have come out from people while uh, just ministering on the rest of God. They said, you know what? We are actually experiencing some of the most restful, peaceful sleep that we've ever experienced in our life because now we finally learned how to sleep by faith, <laughs> you know, and, and, and it's part of this stuff where your mind, so much of what 
we're exposed to and what we've learned, it feeds our mind. Now, God gave us our mind and our intellect, but that's not, he never tells us to live by what you think, right? You live by faith. And so understanding and learning how to live by faith is so important because it's how you live a peaceful life. It's how you live a healed life. It's, it's how you live eternal life is by faith. Our, our eternal salvation is based in faith. Faith in the very grace of God, right? So faith. Now in Romans 12, uh, in fact, let's look at verse 2. Uh, he says here, well, let's look at verse 1. Let's read the whole thing. The Apostle Paul says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is, which is your reasonable service. And he says, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Well, what are we renewing our mind to? We're renewing our mind to the Word of God. Well, what does the Word of God speak all the way through it? It speaks faith. (laughs) You really look throughout the Bible, every book of the Bible, there's faith in it, all right? So he says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. He says, for I say, through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Say, I have have been given given the the measure of faith. So you have faith. And God dealt you and I this measure of faith. Glory to God. And and if you know anything about the nature of God, when God measures out, now faith, I want you to think about this. It's almost like some people go, well, you know, you got a little measure and you got a little measure. That is not even consistent with the character of who God is. The the, the character of God, you, you can learn who he is in the Bible. He's more than enough. Your cup runneth over. So when God dealt to each and every one of us the measure of faith, I look at it not as a little teeny bit, but as a whole heap and whole bunch of faith that I have. And I'm taught that just faith the size of a grain of mustard seed can do some very significant things in this earth. You have significant faith. Amen? Hallelujah. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just thank you, Father, for your word. Lord, now we open our hearts and our minds to hear and receive of you. Lord, I just thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you for giving to us the measure of faith. Lord, that we have faith. And Lord, that our faith isn't insignificant. Oh, but it's great with significance. And we just thank you, Father, that we have the very faith of God inside of us. And that faith can move mountains. Our faith can can cause things in the natural that look impossible to become possible in Jesus' name. So Lord, I ask you help us. Help us so that we can see, so that it is revealed to us. Oh, this, the, 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 reveal to us the limitations that we've allowed so that we can walk free from those limiting mindsets that we've once had, that we would depart from those in Jesus' name, and that we would walk and live and talk faith, that we would talk where all things are possible for those who believe. Lord, let that be said about us. Let that be said about our life in Jesus' name, that we're walking in your ways, living in your ways, and Lord, that signs, wonders, and miracles would follow the word preached, would follow our lives, would follow the the believers and, and people of this church in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah.
So you've been given the measure of faith. Praise God. Now go to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Hebrews 4, 12. We looked at this last week and Sunday, I believe, as well. And I want to look at this again because we looked at this, that the Word of God is powerful. Amen? And I think I mentioned this last week, that there are two ways that anybody can basically do anything. You can either do it with God or without God, right? I mean, when you think about it and you begin to learn to live by faith and you go, you know what, I can try to either do this with or without God. And I, I can't stress enough how important and valuable it is for you to do it with God. Amen? I said amen. <laughs> I mean, listen, you're going to go buy a car, do it with God. <laughs> amen? I mean, if, you, if you're going to just, just do anything in life, you're, gonna, you're trying to figure out where to school, go to school, well, do it with God. Lord, where is it that you would have me to go to school? Amen? If you're going to make an investment, Lord, where is it that you would have me to make this investment? Lord, where is it you would have me? Do it with God. Amen? I mean, don't just leave God at home, so to speak, you know. I mean, practice the very presence of God all the time. It is a very healthy thing for you to do as a believer. Amen? I mean, and so what that goes for here is you can either do things with the Word or without the Word. And so when I say that, the Word of God is a foundation for our life. You're either trying to do it with a foundation or without a foundation. You don't have to raise your hands, but how many of you ever tried to do something without a foundation? <laughs> I, I've tried to do things more than I'd like to admit without the foundation. You get excited about it, you just go out and go, oh, we're going to do this, we're going to make it happen. No foundation. Man, no foundation. You see, as soon as the pressure comes on, no foundation. I, I like to point back and just make this point again. You've probably heard it many times in this church, but it's so important to hear God's voice, right? Before you launch out into anything. Just like that example, one of my favorite examples in the Bible, when when they launched out. Jesus said, Let's, let us go over to the other side. Remember he called the disciples to get in the boat? He said, let us go over to the other side. You remember that? Well, Jesus, he's hearing from his father. He says, I don't say, but what I hear my father say. Man, this will keep you out of trouble. This will keep you out of, uh, you will avoid disaster. Now, I'm not saying you won't have challenges. I'm not saying you won't face things, but the, the end result will not be disastrous if, if you're listening to God. And hey, we've all made mistakes, myself including, some that have almost cost me my life by not listening to God, by not seeking God, by not finding, hearing his voice before I did this, before I went out and did that. But when you now learn this, and I'm gonna, I'm, you know what? I'm gonna live by faith. I'm gonna hear God's voice. I'm gonna go to the Word of God. I'm gonna study His Word. I'm gonna hear His Word. I'm gonna get that as the foundation of why I'm doing this, right? And then when I launch out, when I face those challenges, when I face those storms that come at me, I don't have to be in fear. I don't even have to think about turning back because I have the foundation of the Word to launch out on. When you have the foundation of the Word to launch out on, then you can know you're on a firm foundation. You cannot fail. So he tells the disciples, get in the boats, go to the other side, right? They go on the other side, what happens? There comes a storm. You know the story, right? Storm comes, begin to fill the boat up with water. Where's Jesus? Asleep in the bow of the boat. Asleep in the middle of a storm, asleep when it's filling up with water. It's interesting what human nature tends to do when they, people face adversity. Oftentimes, they blame the very one, <laughs> and sometimes the only one, really, that can help them out of that situation. They begin to point blame at the one. What do they do? Master, carest thou not that we perish? All of a sudden, you don't, do you not care that we're about to die here, right? There's such a teaching in this. You've heard me teach on it oftentimes. What are they doing? They're turning to the one they actually know can help them, but in their turning to him, they're not turning to him in faith. 
they're turning to him in fear and blame, right? The just shall live. Yeah, the just shall go across to the other side by faith. Faith in what? Faith in the word. That's what I'm this, that's what this teaching series is. Faith in the word. Would you launch out into any endeavor? Faith in the word. Now you have the foundation. It's like you know that God has told you to do it. You found it in the scripture. What you're believing, you're anchored to, is the word of God. So now I can believe in something that's solid and firm, right? Something that's eternal is really what it is. And so he rises up, Jesus. They wake Jesus up, right, in the bow of the boat. He stands up in the boat, and he rebukes the wind and speaks to the sea, peace be still, and there's a great calm. I love it because it goes from a great storm, two verses later, to a great calm. And I'm telling you this, we've learned this on purpose because in life you're going to face challenges and storms. And I'm telling you, they can turn that quickly. And it can turn in a way that you, it just makes your head spin, so to speak. You don't know how that calm could possibly be. I mean, you think about it in the natural. Storms don't stop like that. They can blow and move, but they don't immediately stop. In this situation, the storm immediately stopped, right? And then Jesus turns to them and talks to them about what? Faith. <laughs> there it is again. I don't, you can't get away from it. Faith is just throughout the Bible. Faith is so exciting because when we, as we learn how to live by faith and approach every situation and circumstance by faith, it, it even makes the challenges kind of fun because you can almost just laugh at it because you go, man, I don't know how, we're gonna, how this is going to work. I don't know how I'm going to recover from this one. But I know that I know that I know that I know because I know who my Jesus is. I know who my Lord is. And I know what the Word of God says. You know what you are? You're talking from a position of authority you're talking from a position that is firm because of the foundation. Amen. Amen? All right, so the Word of God, we looked here in Isaiah, or Hebrews, excuse me. It says, for the Word of God is quick and powerful. Say quick, quick. And, powerful. and powerful. Okay, that's the, the Word of God. He is quick and powerful. So, again, you're either doing it with the Word or without the Word. If you're dealing with loneliness, you'll either do it with the Word of God or without the Word of God. I mean, really, depression, you either do it with the Word of God, well, I'm going to overcome this, you know, I'm trying to deal with this, I'm battling this. We're either going to battle it with or without God, with or without the Word. And I'm just telling you, the Word of God is quick and powerful, so I highly recommend Doing it with the Word of God. Amen. 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 Sickness. You, you're dealing with sickness. You can lay there. You can take every medication that's prescribed to you. All right? But you, 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 can, either, you can either stand and, and lay there with or without God in terms of your fight. Well, this must be just what God wants from me. No. No, it's not. Amen. So, all this we begin to look at and you begin to hear, and, and even in my own life, and my own body, I've seen over and over again where I've tried to do things and tried to do this and tried to do that, and it's almost like I go back and I go, why, why didn't, why am I somehow just trying to do this on my own, and all you do is back up, back up, back up, and go, all right, God, forgive me, I, I had this wrong, I just, come here. I need your help on this, right? And then, and then I'll just get my Bible out, begin to read the Word, and then the Spirit of the Lord just begins to just so minister to my heart and to my spirit and show me and reveal things to me and help me. And then once you get that, that, that Word, it's like the comfort, the peace of God and the strength, and it, that faith all comes together. And now you, now you can just, in the natural, it looks like everything's the same, but all of a sudden now you're excited about it. You know, you can be excited about a fight. David was excited to go after Goliath. Why? Because he knew his God. 
You're either operating in faith or you're operating in fear. You either have a foundation or you don't have a foundation, right? Hallelujah. And the Word of God is quick. And the Word of God is powerful. And it says, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of thoughts and the intents of the heart. Glory to God. And I like the New Living. It says, it is alive and powerful. The Word of God is alive and powerful. The Amplified Bible says the Word of God, the, the Word that God speaks is alive and full of power, making it active, operative, energizing, and effective. Glory to God. The Word of God literally contains everything we need in life. Whew. Everything we need. Now go to Isaiah 1 9. Isaiah 1 9. We looked at this last week as well. A little bit of kind of review that I wanted to do this morning. Book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse, excuse me, verse 19. I said 9, I think. 19. He says, If ye be willing and obedient, Say willing and obedient. What, what, what happens to the person who's willing and obedient? Whoa, glory. What happens? Shall eat the good of the land. Willing and obedient. There's something that happens for the person who's willing and obedient. Amen? Amen. You know, you've probably seen this and talked to people like this, and I've got a good friend that, that, that thinks this way and believes this way, and we're good friends. I don't, we don't butt heads. We have discussion about it. But he says, and, and he comes from you know, a particular denominational background and was raised in that and for many, many years. And he says, you know, you know I, I just believe that God is... Um, Sovereign, like everything that happens um, in the world and in the earth is just 100% up to God. Um, we, we really don't have um, any say in what, what happens, you know. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to argue with anybody with, with their position. They, everybody's free to believe what they want to believe. I mean, God gives us that freedom, right? And, uh, but we have good fun conversations around this at times. And, uh, you know, you, you got to ask yourself, well, he says here, if you're willing and obedient, what happens? She'll eat the good of the land. Isn't that interesting? And he says, but if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword. Well, that right there isn't just, God's not coming along and saying, you know, uh, you be willing and obedient, you don't be willing and obedient, you be willing and obedient. No, he wants us all to be willing and obedient. Why? Because he wants us all to eat the good of the land. Amen? And this good of the land represents not just like you eat the good of land. This represents you, you live in the good houses, you drive the nice cars. You, it, the, God is not hung up on things like people are. Here's what I know about God. He wants the very best for you. Yep. Whatever, you whatever you desire as, as for that to be the best, then it's the best for you. S see, some people's idea of the best isn't my idea of the best. They like things that I don't really care about. There's a lot of, you know, I mean, Lamborghinis are cool cars, but I could care less. I frankly just don't want to ride in one because I don't want to have to bend over to get down into one. I mean, it's just me. <laughs> I, 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 I drive a pickup truck most of the time. I have an old 1985 military Humvee I drive from time to time. And I was driving that the other day down the road, and this guy pulled up next to me in a $250,000 sports car. He goes, I love your car. <laughs> I, thought, 
I paid like six grand for this thing, you know? <laughs> His one rim probably cost more than my whole car, but he like, what I drove, you know, because it, it, it doesn't matter. It's just, this is what I just, I enjoy driving that car more than any other car I own, just what I like to drive, okay? It's just, it's just my thing. So for me, it's like, that's just God's goodness for me, okay? That, that's the best. For me, that's, the, that's just the best. I just like it. And so you'll eat the good of the land. You might like food that I don't like. God just wants you to have the best for you. He wants your heart's desire. Delight yourself in him, and he'll give you the desires of your heart. Not of his heart, of your heart. Because he's a personal God. He doesn't all have us like exactly the same thing. He didn't create robots, amen? There is so much, there's, there, there's just so many awesome aspects of who God is and his love is that we don't even take play, part of because so much of what we've known about God is we've just narrowed him down to such a, a confined part of who he is and he's just much bigger than that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Now go, go over with me to, um, let's look here. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go to, yeah. Go to Proverbs chapter 3. Let's look at this real quick. Proverbs chapter 3. So if you're willing and obedient, what happens? Okay. And it, he said, if you refuse and you rebel... You shall be devoured with a sword, right? Is rebellion good? No, it's bad. Amen? I mean, do, do you think we just let our kids do whatever they want, whenever they want? You know, well, just let them find their own way, or do we teach them and train them? We, we teach them and train them, right? I mean, we know kids, by, by just natural, they'll, they'll, they'll be jealous. I mean, jealous, they'll be... Uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, selfish. I mean, just kids typically are, are selfish. I mean, we've all been selfish, not just kids, right? And so what do we do? We, we, we train them. We teach them, right? We're giving them instruction. We train up a child in the way he should go. Is that right? And when they're old, they won't depart from it. Well, do we train them up just in some areas, or we train them up in the things of the Lord as well? Yeah, the, the Bible says when we, do, when we do baby dedications, we dedicate your child to the Lord here. One of the things that we do is we, 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 uh, we talk to the parents and we charge them to train their children, as the Scriptures tell us to, to talk about the things of, of the Lord. Well, when? When we go to church? No. Just at nighttime? No. He says you do it when you wake up, when you walk down the road, and when you go to bed. <laughs> so you're literally teaching your children about the things of God all the time, right? Now, this helps you as parents because it puts you in that mindset too because it keeps you on your toes and it keeps you sharp in order to train your children. And you'll find yourself learning and being more aware of the things of God and the goodness of God and God's plan for your life and their life at the same time. Not to mention, when you ask for the Holy Spirit to help you, he'll help you to be able to train those children. You're not training them on your own. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so when we get in a habit of this, we begin to talk about, I mean, the older I get, the more I'm like, you can apply this to your work ethic, right? You can apply this. We were talking about that a few months ago in church service, right? You talk about this where you're investing money. You talk about in, in the business world. You talk about it with their health. You talk about it with their attitude. You talk about it with their friends and choosing their friends and choosing the company they're around, right? All these things have, uh, there's, there's a foundation for all this in the word of God. Is that right? I mean, bad company corrupts good morals, right? So you, 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 you begin to train. Well, why can't I hang out with them? Well, this is why. You start hanging out with those people. Guess what? You become a product of those people, right? So all this goes, again, this comes back to the very, one of the very beginning statements I said is you can, everything in life, you can either do it with God or without God. With the word of God or without the word of God. And you choose God's word, you're choosing life for you and for your children. Amen. Praise God. All right, Proverbs 3.1 says, My son, 
Forget not my law or teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. I'm reading the Amplified Classic. He said, for length of days and years of life worth living. I think that's interesting. That's why I wanted to read this in the Amplified Bible. He says, length of days and years of life worth living. That's important. Worth living. There are people that don't see the value that they have and when one of the, it's very dangerous when a person begins to lose their value because they don't see the purpose in living. But when a person understands their value, glory to God, amen? amen. Now you go, you know what? I understand why I'm here. I understand I got, I got stuff to do. I mean, I, 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 glory to God. That's a wonderful thing. How many of you ever discovered that? <laughs> amen? And if you haven't, ask the Lord to show you what it is. Because it, gives, it just gives this purpose and this, this energizing force on the inside of you. Glory to God, I see it. And he's begin to, you begin to walk in that, that gifting that's in you, and that, that anointing that's on your life. It, it, it's just the most exciting thing. And then you're like, wait a minute. I got to live like a couple hundred years because I got a lot to do here because that's what happens when you begin to discover that on the inside of you. And I believe that as you're walking in that, and you get, you know, up in years, you're going to go, well, God, I, I mean, I feel like I got a lot more to do, but it's up to you. Do, 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 have, I, have I finished my race and my course here? Because I, I'm out to make sure. Amen? Be, th th this is where you're, you're not just like, well, I'm just putting my time in. You know, it's just a number of your time and years until I'm off this planet. You know, there's only so much one person can do. I mean, but there's a lot of people, there's a lot of Christians that think like that. You know, this world, is, this is what's going on, and there's not much we can do about it. There is something you can do about it, people. God. Thank God Jesus didn't have that attitude. God. Amen. Amen. We're still living by his example thousands of years later. And you, you are a child of God. And the effect that you can have on this earth and the people of this earth can last for generation after generation after generation after generation. Amen. There is that great of anointing and power on your life. And God has a great desire to work through your life. You are the body of Christ in this earth. You are so significant to God. So significant. He has a great desire to use your life to be a blessing to people. Say, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. To, be a blessing. to be a blessing. Hallelujah. All right, let me keep reading. He says, length of days and years of life worth living and tranquility inward and outward and continuing through old age till death. These shall they add to you. Shall they add to you. Amen? Glory to God. Say, that's me. He says, let not mercy and kindness, I think this is interesting, shutting out all hatred and selfishness, and truth shutting out all deliberate hypocrisy or, or, or falsehood, forsake you. Bind them about your neck, Write them upon the tablet of your heart. Now let's look at this again. I want to take my time here. The Lord just direct me to do so. He says, let not mercy and kindness and truth forsake you. Mercy, kindness, and truth. Say it with me. Mercy, kindness, and truth. You and I, have to all continually check our heart and check ourselves and our motives and making sure that we don't let mercy and kindness and truth forsake us. Amen? Meaning that we don't walk away from that. We don't leave that in our life. And I'm telling you, I, I, I'm sure you see it too. You see more and more and more 
a lack of mercy in people's lives towards other people. You see a lack of kindness towards other people. I got a phone call today from someone. They were talking to me, and they, they went out, and they were at a boat ramp, and they pulled their boat up to the boat ramp, and they got out of their, their truck, and were just getting a few things and untied something on their boat. Now, this gentleman said he was at the boat ramp early. There wasn't hardly anybody else like there waiting. This one truck pulled up, and this guy started yelling at him, started cursing at him, started threatening him, all this stuff because he wasn't putting his boat in the water fast enough in his opinion. And he said, man, it it shook me up. He said, this guy was so angry, he was trembling and came over to me to confront me. Now, what's crazy about it is the guy who called me, this guy is a big human being, strong man. Physically, he was not intimidated by him at all. And he said, I couldn't believe how this guy was just losing his cool. He's like, I'd never seen this guy before in my life. I hadn't been saying anything to the guy. Just in his mind, I wasn't moving fast enough, and he wanted to put his boat in quickly for whatever reason, those fish. You know, you got to get those fish or whatever. But what is it an example? It's a very example of this right here. This man is forsaking this mercy and this kindness. Well, let, let, me, just go, let me just look at this. Remember what we're reading here. He says, my son... Forsake not my law and teachings, but let your heart keep my commandments. He says, for length of days and years of life. Folks, if you get worked up, I'm not saying you do, but in this case with this gentleman, do you think that affects that man's physical body? Meaning the man that was all mad and he's literally shaking, yelling, and cursing at the guy that goes to this church, it absolutely affects his his physical body. Do you think that adds to his life or potentially takes away from his life? Takes away from his life, right? So right here, we're sitting here on a Thursday evening, and some people might be going, why are you going to church? Well, you're going to church, if nothing else, you just are reminded or learning that by being kind, by being tender-hearted, right? By being merciful, by, by holding the truth, it adds days and years to your life. And when somebody approaches you and they're acting like this guy was approached on Sunday, or what, not Sunday, this week, um, like that at the, at the boat ramp, could be at the grocery store. I've dealt with people like this. I had a guy come this close to my face just not too long ago and threatened to kill me. And he says, you better watch yourself because he says, if, if I see you in this town, I'm going to come up behind you when you're not looking. Yeah, I'm not kidding you. I've had two people in the last year threaten me. <laughs> it's crazy. What's going on? They're, they're, they're forsaking this. They're forsaking this. Is that right? Well, I'm just this very basic stuff for us, church, but our society, and you know it, you've seen this, you hear it, you see people attack other people, and now with social media, all the more, because you can get on a thing and they're not face-to-face. I mean, a lot of people, you know, they wouldn't do it face-to-face, but they'll do it, they'll cyber bully, they'll do all these things, right? Let's not forsake this, Amen. I don't care how mad you are about some situation, how wrong you've been done about a situation, how wrong you've been done in a situation. Do not leave mercy. Do not leave kindness. Do not leave truth for your life. (laughs) Hallelujah. He says, so shall you find favor, good understanding, and high esteem in the sight of of God and man. Lean on, trust in, and be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind. And do not rely on your own insight and understanding. In all your ways, know, recognize, and acknowledge Him. That's what we're talking about also, right? Faith in the Word, but this this is a foundation, right? You can either do it with or without God. And he says, in all your ways, 
know, recognize, and acknowledge him. And what will happen? He will direct and make straight and plain your path. Say, my path is straight, is plain, it's known because it is revealed to me by God. Glory to God. In how many ways are you going to do this? All right, now you commit into that. <laughs> I, I just recently had to, I, I, I talked to myself, by the way, and I was doing something, and I had to remind myself, and I said, hey, Aaron, remember, in all your ways, acknowledge him. This is what I said to myself. I, I was getting upset about something. I said, hey, Aaron, remember, in all your ways, acknowledge him. And he will direct your path. Isn't it good to know that you have someone who will direct your path? You're not having to figure it out. Well, I'm just going to figure it out. Now I just got to figure it out. And again, if you have children, you don't just say, well, we're just going to let them figure it out. Sometimes that's just the best way, let them figure it out. No, the best way is to teach them and to train them to acknowledge God in all their ways so that their path can be directed of Him. Amen. Praise God. He says, be not wise in your own eyes. Reverently fear and worship the Lord and turn entirely away from evil. It shall be health. Oh, look at this. It shall be health to your nerves and sinews and marrow and moistening to your bones. Mm, 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 mm. Health to your nerves. Say health, health. to my nerves. <laughs> and he says, honor the Lord with your capital and sufficiency from righteous labors and with the first fruits of all your income. So shall your storage places be filled with plenty. Now look at this. I mean, this is good stuff, people. Where are our storage places today, for the most part, our bank accounts. In today's age, that's a lot, not all of our storage places, but that is a, you know, a, you could recognize that as your storage place or one of your storage places. So you're telling me, Pastor, that, it, that by acknowledging him, by, by holding fast to, you know, but the, the mercy and kindness and truth, that somehow that has an effect on my bank account? Come on, what are you preaching? That's exactly what I'm saying. And I'm only saying it because the Word says it. You mean if I honor God with my capital, my sufficiency, uh, you know, the things, that, the things that comes into my hand, the income that comes into my hand, if I honor him with it, that it actually does something? Amen. Does it? Amen. Yes. Should we teach our children this? Yeah. i got a nine-year-old. She's been working at one of our little businesses that we own. She, she wants to work. It's interesting. I have four kids. The youngest one wants to work. The youngest one's making more money currently than all the rest of them, combined. <laughs> and what's cute about it is, man, trying to get her to do her math homework has been quite the challenge. But somehow, I, 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 this is what I like about business. I put her to work, and I'm like, all right, I'm going to pay you five bucks an hour. Five bucks an hour, okay, how many hours can I work? Well, how many hours want to work today? How about I work three hours? Okay, yeah, work three hours. Okay, I'm going to get 15 bucks. I'm like, <laughs> you know math. <laughs> when it actually affects your pocket, you know math. And then she's like, she works th three hours. Oh, like the, I probably already told you this. She worked three hours at one of our businesses. We're driving home, and we have a general manager, a young lady that runs all our businesses there. And she goes, um, can I take her position pretty soon? <laughs> That's the nine-year-old, Okay. So then she's like, next time I want to work four hours, I don't want to make 20 bucks. I'm like, deal. She comes in, she worked four hours. The next time she goes, I want to work six hours because I'm going to make 30 bucks. What is she? She's doing this. Now we get, now she's starting to accumulate a little money, right? And I'm like, all right, now 
You know what the tithe is? <laughs> I don't want to talk about that. That's what she said to me. I don't want to talk about that. I'm like, oh, well, we're going to talk about it, all right. Do you know what the tithe is? Yes, I know what the tithe is. All right, because she had earned 100 bucks at this point. I said, so what's the tithe? $100, $10. I know it's $10. She already knew what it was, <laughs> even though she didn't want to talk about it. And I said, but what we do is we honor God with it. Well, why? I mean, kids don't know this, right? I mean, it doesn't seem right to them. They don't quite understand it. Well, because we do this, and, but why? We need to be able to answer the why of why we do what we do, parents. Amen? And this goes for your friends. Not only, don't assume it's just kids that don't know this. There's plenty of adults that don't understand. They have no clue of why you would ever do this. And what did we just read? By honoring God with our capital and our sufficiency, he will increase our storage places. Now, in the natural, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But you got to understand, your whole approach to Christianity is not, not a natural approach. The whole approach to Christianity and eternal life and salvation, the very gift of Jesus Christ and his goodness and his mercy, is that which is spiritual. And I'm telling you that I still, to this day, scratch my head and go, how in the world was I here financially at one point in my life, not that long ago, and now I'm here. And the only explanation I can give people is the goodness of God. Amen. It's his faithfulness. It's honoring God, and he honors you. You put him first. You seek first the kingdom of God. The Bible says, Matthew 6, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right. And all these things will be added to you besides. It is the coolest, most awesome thing. See, you can approach your finances, and some people do this. They try to do everything else to live for God, but don't mess with my finances. Oh, I'll tip God here and there. Tipping God doesn't count. I'm just telling you, it doesn't qualify you this. You honor him. You hear this? All right. And I, I, I'm, our needs are met. Glory to God. I'm helping you out, here, and I'm helping myself out. Honor the Lord. Look at it again, verse 9. Honor the Lord. Say it with me. Honor the Lord. Now, now I just want you to think about this just for a minute. If you're going to honor someone, just bring in the natural. How would you honor them? Well, here, 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 here's, here's a few, here's five bucks. Or would you say, what is it? that I can do? What is it that you would have to do? What is it that you would have me to do for you, Lord? So this is where I begin to teach my nine-year-old daughter. I said, Let, let's look at this. I said, you have, you can walk. You can talk. You can see. You can hear. You have life in you. You have strength in you. I said, you're able to go over here and work a little bit and accumulate a little bit of money that, that, that's coming in for you at nine years old. But don't you think that the reason you can do any of that is because of the one who created you and made you and holds you together and gives you life? She began to sit there and look at me and listen, right? And I said, so if you just think about it, it's all his. And you just honor him and say, Lord, this is all yours. I recognize it. I would have nothing without you. What is it that you would have me to do? How is it that I can honor you? When you begin to have that, see, that's that, that's that, that kindness and that merciful. This is, a, this is an attitude of honor to the Lord, right? We honor the Lord in, in other ways. I'm just talking about just the, the financial piece right now, but we honor him in many, many other ways as well. But this is a big way. This is a big way we honor the Lord. Amen? And we just seek the Lord on this. All right? <clears throat> he says, so shall your storage places be filled with plenty. Say, my storage places, my storage places 
are filled with plenty and overflowing. Because he says, and your vats shall overflow with new wine. This is a picture of God's love and mercy to us. How much he loves us. It's like, well, the Bible says, God honors those who honor him. You honor the Lord, he's like, oh, 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 now you opened the door. Now you gave me opportunity. I can see you're doing this by faith. And as you do this by faith, now, glory to God, you gave me something to work with. God works by faith, by the way. He responds by faith. I shouldn't say he responds. It's how it operates. It's how the whole kingdom of God functions. It's like, it's almost like it's the currency of the kingdom of God, faith. And as you begin to operate by faith in these areas and you're merciful towards others and you're kind towards others, even when, even when you're not treated kind, even when you've been done wrong and you respond in faith because your source is not in other people, your source is not in other things, your source is in him. Woo! It's like the floodgates are open wide to you and you begin to participate in a whole nother kingdom's system. And it's called the kingdom of God. It is the best program we can ever get involved with. Go with me. Uh, oh gosh. All right. Go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1. Now, here the Apostle Paul's writings, I'm going to read this out of the New Living Translation. He says, when I first, uh, 1 Corinthians 2, 1 says, when I first came to you, dear brothers and sisters, I didn't use lofty words and impressive wisdom to tell you God's secret plan. Glory. He said, I decided that while I was with you, I would forget everything except Jesus Christ. The one who was crucified. Again, Jesus is our everything. He is our everything. He is our salvation. He is our redemption. He is our eternal life. Amen? I mean, He is our healing. He is how we're redeemed from the curse because of Him. Amen? He is our peace. And he says, I, 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 when I came to you, dear brothers and sisters, I didn't use lofty words or impressive wisdom to tell you God's secret plan. I decided that while I was with you, I would forget everything except Jesus Christ, the one who was crucified. Keep reading verse 3. He says, I came to you in weakness, timid and trembling. And my message and my preaching were very plain rather than using clever persuasive speeches. I relied only on the power of the Holy Spirit. I relied only on the power of the Holy Spirit. Say, I rely only on the power of the Holy Spirit. Little news flash, I'm going to talk about the power of God on Sunday. And we're going to learn about the power of the Holy Spirit. We're going to learn about the very power of God. We're going to talk about the might of God and how you and I, we talked about last week, that we are strengthened with his might. His might. It's the very might that's in the inside of the body of Christ. And, and I'm, I'm already preaching Sunday's message. I told you I'm excited about Sunday's message. But what's happened in church and in religion is somehow we've had this, we've, 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 we've created this shell of, 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 of the things of God and, and, and church and stuff like that. But it's almost like, I'm, I'm going to use this example. I hope you don't get offended by it. Please don't. It's like we have the gun, but there's no bullets in it. It's like there's no power in it. It's like, we, it's like we're, we're just satisfied, not, not saying us, but maybe us. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like you got all this. But where's the power? And we can't forsake the very power of God. And we gotta, we gotta just be reminded, that's what's gonna happen Sunday, that the very power of God is in you. We're not looking around, where, where's the power? Looking for something to happen. The power of God 
is in the body of Christ. It's in him. Amen? And you and I are in him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And it's just exactly what Paul was talking about here. He said, I relied only on the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Man, we have access to the power of the Holy Spirit. We have such an unfair advantage against the devil and everyone in the world because we have the very power of the Holy Spirit. We don't need to walk around, ask ourselves, well, I don't know what to do, it's just so hard, I'm struggling. The very power of the Holy Spirit. We've got the power of the Holy Spirit. Who? Man. Thank you, Jesus. It's resurrecting power. Your problems are little. We have the power of the Holy Spirit. That storm seemed big that day. The water seemed like a lot coming into the boat. But when Jesus rose up and he spoke to the wind, the very power of the Holy Spirit went into action. And guess what happened to that storm? It stopped immediately. This is the very power of the Holy Spirit that's resident in the body of Christ. And we can't play around like we're dumb to the power of the Holy Spirit. We need to know that the power of the Holy Spirit is alive and well and in each and every one of us as children of God. The world, I'm telling you, the world is looking for the power of the Holy Spirit. Hollywood is making movie after movie after movie with characters. They're making up characters after characters. They're bringing back old Marvel characters because they're trying to figure out how to create characters to show people power. Well, this superpower, that superpower, that superpower. But I'm telling you, the power, the real, true power is in the body of Christ that comes from the Holy Spirit that's dwelling in the body of Christ today. All right. So that's the commercial for Sunday, but it's just, this is all of us to get excited about this very power that's in us. And I know the devil doesn't want you to know about the power. He doesn't want you using the power. He wants to say, well, don't act like that. Don't be religious. Don't be a fanatical. Oh, the world needs the power of God. There are people who are sick. There are people who are confused. There are people who are depressed. And I'm telling you, you carry, you are a carrier of the power of the Holy Spirit. Well, if the world, excuse me, I don't mean to be, I, I'm, I'm not trying to be politically correct. If the world can be in fear about the quote unquote power of COVID and keep people locked up for, for months, and I'm not, I'm just, I'm not trying to get, you know, I'm not trying to, I'm just saying that there's, there is a belief in the power of a disease to affect another person, another person, another person to bring death. On the other hand, I want you to come over here and, and, and say, okay, that's over there. That's over there. I get that. It's a natural thing. But over here is a very real, powerful, spiritual thing, and it's the power of the Holy Spirit. And that is in, that's in the body of Christ. So, and it's in us so that we can go into this world. He says, I don't, I'm not sending you away. I'm sending you into the world so that you can walk. And Paul goes, I'm not over here talking lofty words. I'm not talk, trying to talk about the wisdom of man, but I'm here and in demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, Paul, Paul was a highly educated and revered person in the community. He was smart, he was intelligent, he was educated, and he didn't come over there all philosophical and try to look all proper. He just came out of the gate and said, listen, I'm leaving all that there, and I'm coming over here to show you the power and demonstration of the Spirit of God. Glory to God. This is a teaching for us to learn how to walk and live in this earth today. And don't ever get the idea that you shouldn't share Jesus at work. Amen. That's a lie from the devil. Yeah. And don't ever get the idea that you shouldn't talk about Jesus at school. 
That's a lie from the devil. Amen. And I'll, I'll just say this. Don't be annoying about it, but don't be ashamed about it. Don't be judgmental of other people. They don't know what you know. Now what happens is people get a little bit of knowledge and then what happens is they get prideful about the little bit of knowledge they have. Well, how come you're not doing this? Well, you know God could do that. You know God could do that. Well, they don't know God could do that. If they knew what you knew, they might think and believe like you think and believe, but they just don't know. But you know what does work? You know what language they do here? Love. Amen. And when they're over there, and they're challenged, and they're hurting. You don't get judgmental about it. You come in there and say, could I pray for you? I believe that God can, can heal you of that. I believe God can help you in that. I believe God can deliver you, you know? And now they're like, they might not have heard that before. And all of a sudden, they begin to hear the faith of God in your heart, in your spirit. And, it, it, and it's, it's contagious. And all of a sudden, they begin to believe in the very power of the Holy Spirit as you believe in the power of the Holy Spirit and the power of the Word of God. Remember, the Word of God is quick, alive, and powerful. This is what changes people's lives. It's what changed John's life. You saw the testimony. Uh, 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 if you were here last, you know, two weeks ago, you saw the testimony of, of what happened. And you know what? There's more than his testimony in this church. Glory to God. Amen? All right. Let me, let me finish reading. I'll close up here. Hallelujah. He said, I relied only on the power of the Holy Spirit. I did this so you would trust not in human wisdom, but in the power of God. Not in what? Human wisdom, but in the power of God. So listen, this is important for us to know. Because a lot of people don't understand, a lot of Christians don't even understand this. There's human wisdom, and then there's the power of God. When I hear reports on the news, people tell me, read it on internet, I, I have grown to condition myself, and I think you can and should too, that I just, in my mind, I'm like, well, that's not all there is. Because there's always the power of God. I don't get, that keeps me, I don't get upset, concerned, not in despair. I see negative, bad things. I'm not like, oh, man, oh, is it going to get any worse? Oh, man. Because I see, listen, the, the, the problems that are happening in the earth cannot be solved by human wisdom. They can't. They're trying. They're scrambling. You can't throw enough money at any problem to fix it. And that's what gets so frustrating and so overwhelming with people with problems. <laughs> But then you come on over here and you say, one thing I know, there's the power of God. And even though this might look bad and that might look bad, there's the power of God. So don't ever end your thinking with the problem. Keep your thinking going beyond to guess what? I see it, I understand it, I recognize the problem, but I'm continuing it on through and there's the power of God. Man, it just, it just, you can live peaceful with it. I mean, even under your own roof, you can see problems go, oh man, man, oh, man I messed up, and, and you may have messed up, and I've messed up plenty, but guess what? There is the power of God. There's the power of God to heal. There's the power of God to restore. There's the power of God to carry on. There's the power of God to have peace. There's the power of God to reveal his love to you. There's the power of God for every situation. 
that mankind ever finds themselves in. Man, we, the reality is that we've made a big mess in a lot of ways, but guess what? Who cares? There's the power of God is how I look at it. It's like, it's like, don't use a permanent marker. It's all dry erase. That's how I see it. Because there's the power of God. I mean, if I can, oh man, it's a mess. Guess what? There's the power of God. Clean it right up. Clean it right up. Clean it right up. I've made a mess of things. Power of God comes in. Cleans it right up. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Did you get something out of this? Well, we didn't get there all where I wanted to go, but stand to your feet and we'll, uh, we'll close there for tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you. Thank you for the power of God, that your power is in the earth today. Thank you, Jesus. Reveal to us in a greater measure, in a greater way, the significance of your power and your love and your mercy. And Lord, where we haven't been tenderhearted, where we haven't been kind and merciful towards others, where we've acted incorrectly and wrong, Lord, we change our ways, we repent. We thank you for your mercies that are new every morning. Lord, show us, show us, reveal to us in our hearts and in our lives how to walk in your love, how to walk in your power, how to walk in your ways. Our heart and our desire is to imitate you as you tell us to, as, as, as dear children imitate their natural fathers, that we would imitate you, our heavenly Father. And Lord, we give you all the glory and all the praise and all the honor. We, we, we see that it's you, that it's you. You're the giver of life. You're the sustainer of life. Thank you, Jesus. That we heed your voice. With all the voices in the world, with all the opinions in the world, with all the quote-unquote wisdom of the world, we look to you. You are the author, the developer, the finisher of our faith. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, for your help. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, if you're here and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I don't want to just assume that everybody in this room, or even if you're watching online, if you're in this room, we want to give you that opportunity to come out of your seat, walk down here, give us the opportunity to pray with you. As I, as I dismiss, you can come out of your seat in just a minute. And or if you'd like prayer in any other area of your life, or maybe you know somebody that would like prayer in your life, um, I'd like you to give you that invitation to come down to this altar so we can pray with you and believe God for a miracle. Praise God. Remember that you are the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. Bless going in and bless going out. And everything you set your hand to, you're the lender. You're good looking. You're dismissed.